Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. What did we do to deserve this? Well, we got through February, that's what. See how many more 60s are waiting in the wings. Devin? State COVID-19 vaccinations now open for anyone 50 years plus with a pre-existing condition. We're asking, do you have to prove the pre-existing condition? Okay, Sean, but we begin with our first real taste of the return to normal. The CDC now says fully vaccinated people can get together in small groups, no mask required. It's the question everyone has been asking. What's reasonably safe for fully vaccinated people and what isn't? Off the top today at 5, the CDC releasing its highly anticipated guidance on that all important issue. Dr. Frank George here with a closer look at what the CDC is calling an important first step. Frank? Yeah, Kim and Devin, so they're calling it a first step because the guidance will be updated as more people are vaccinated and as we learn more about whether the vaccines can also reduce the risk of spreading the virus. As we expected, the guidance is conservative, but it does provide a roadmap for those who are fully vaccinated to begin seeing other people. The easiest scenario involves people who are all fully vaccinated. CDC recommends that fully vaccinated people can visit with other fully vaccinated people in small gatherings indoors without wearing masks or physical distancing. Remember here we are talking about private settings where everyone is vaccinated. It gets more complicated when some are vaccinated and some are not. CDC recommends that fully vaccinated people can visit with unvaccinated people from one other household indoors without wearing masks or physical distancing as long as the unvaccinated people and any unvaccinated members of their household are not at high risk for severe COVID-19 disease. That means no one in the unvaccinated household is over 65 or has underlying health problems. If anyone from the unvaccinated household is at high risk, everyone, regardless of vaccination status, should still wear a mask and physically distance and choose to meet outdoors or in a well-ventilated space. Those same precautions are also still recommended when fully vaccinated people gather with unvaccinated people from multiple households. As for quarantining... CDC's new guidance also recommends that fully vaccinated people do not need quarantine or get tested following a known exposure to someone with COVID-19 as long as they are asymptomatic. The CDC says the fully vaccinated are still advised to avoid medium and large gatherings, avoid non-essential travel, and continue to wear a mask and social distance in public places. Now a reminder, the CDC definition of fully vaccinated means at least two weeks past the second dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine or two weeks past the single dose of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Although I do want to stress the clinical trials actually found the protection from the J&J &J vaccine goes up after four weeks. So personally, I would use that as my own guideline. It's a lot of asterisks involved here, Frank. Uh, so why not change, you suppose, the travel guidelines for the fully vaccinated? Well, you know, the CDC director said they are really trying to discourage travel because every time there's a surge in travel, there's a surge in cases. Of course, yeah. travel is a time when people from other places are mixing a lot, and that also helps variant spread. Right. Now, she did say they're hopeful that the next set of guidance will have an update on travel for the vaccinated once more science is available to guide any of those changes. A lot of hopeful travelers will be hanging on that word too. All right, Frank, our other top story at this hour, it's back to school for Detroit students. After months of remote learning, students are back in the classroom, but as our Paula Tutman explains, while kids are happy to be back, a lot of teachers are saying it's just too soon. 20,000 students expressed an interest in returning to face-to-face -face learning, but with only 20 to 30 percent of teachers willing to return, that means only about 1,000 students will actually see a teacher. Others will rotate from face-to-face -to, -face to a learning center. The district and the teachers' union are in lockstep with one another, generally miles apart on the issues. Today, only six feet apart and very much in step with one another in terms of making teachers feel safe coming back into the classrooms. Parents are understanding, yes, they want their children to be in front of teachers and not a computer monitor. 
but most parents we spoke to were glad the Learning Center option was an option so their children could get back into some semblance of structured learning and they could get back to work. A house ain't that big. Imagine five laptops up and you trying to talk, one teacher yelling and the other teacher saying this, and they kind of, you know, it's hard to do a whole electronic thing like that. The president of the Detroit Federation of Teachers, which represents 3,000 DPSCD teachers, was satisfied that teachers would start to return to class once he files his findings with them. All employees had to take a negative COVID test before they reported back to the building. Uh, then when you enter the building, uh, you have to take a temperature check. Uh, and go through a verbal symptoms uh, review of, of COVID symptom, uh, symptoms. After the building is used, we deep clean all the classrooms, the hallways. I can say uh, that uh, the district has done everything that the district can do uh, to ensure safety, uh, to ensure that mitigation strategies uh, are in place. And for folks uh, who are comfortable and, and, and are on the edge, if you're on the fence and you're thinking about coming in, um, things are being done at the schools that we've been at so far. Uh, to, to, to really assist and make sure that folks are safe. So here's what happens next. The president of DFT, Terrence Martin, will speak to the rank and file on Thursday. Thus far, he's got a really positive report. And so it really is thought that more and more teachers will start feeling more comfortable returning to the classroom. Paula Tutman, Local 4. Okay, Paula, and the district is offering teachers $750 per quarter in hazard pay. Let's look at the coronavirus numbers from the weekend. 1,960 new cases in Michigan over the past two days. So that averages out to 980 cases per day. Along with that, four more coronavirus deaths over that same time period. And when it comes to the vaccine, there's a pretty big jump, putting the total at 3.3 million. Two and a half million shots have gone into arms. Well, if you have not had a chance to get outside today, you do yourself a favor, race out there because it's been beautiful. It sure has. Temperatures in the 60s, much warmer than the weekend. Let's get over to Ben to see how long this warm stretch is going to last, Ben. Yeah, well, if you do that, just make sure you come back for the commercials because we all need to get paid. <laughs> but uh, temperatures outside are fantastic. Look at these numbers. Low and mid 60s all across the area. Even Banax up in the thumb is checking in at 54 degrees. When you do the math from yesterday to today, a beautiful uh, tomato shade of red shows up 25 degrees warmer and in some cases closer to 30 degrees warmer than the numbers that we were looking at on Sunday afternoon. So here's what's in store for the rest of the week. We do have some pretty warm temperatures for the work week. However, not so much for the weekend. So we'll show you the change there. Have your umbrellas ready for the middle of the week. That looks like a soaker and can't really rule out some thunder with that as well. So a lot to discuss in a very spring like forecast in a few minutes, guys. OK, Ben, police in Lincoln Park are investigating the discovery of a dead newborn. The remains were found behind a building on Fort Street, not far from the intersection with Goddard. Victor Williams has the update from police. Victor. Yes, tragic situation all around. There's a community that lives on the same street where that baby's body was found, and all of them are totally shocked that something so horrible could happen close to their neighborhood. This is a quiet, peaceful neighborhood. I would never imagine anything like this happen. You always think it's some other neighborhood, not here. People living on Fort Street are still trying to figure out who placed a baby in a bag, leaving it in a wooded area nearby. She could have left that baby here on the doorstep instead of doing what she did. Cell phone video shows police searching the area after the heartbreaking discovery of the lifeless body was made Saturday night. Elizabeth Brewer says she saw it all from her living room window. It's bothering me. I just feel bad for that child that it had to be out there in that freezing cold. Days later in the memorial for this at this point nameless baby continues to grow. Debbie Boland started the shrine. I want him to be remembered and know that he's not garbage. He's a baby and he's a child of God. There's no telling if the baby died in the bag or was dumped after passing away. Either way, Debbie says it was something it did not deserve. Well, if something went wrong or whatever, I think they should have buried him or something, but not put him in trash like and dismiss him. In the meantime, the search continues for the child's mother. Although nothing has been confirmed by police, Neighbors have a feeling she may be a familiar face. I just want her to be aware of what she did was wrong. Just a really sad story, and we're still trying to find out the exact manner in which that baby died. So, of course, when we learn that information, we'll keep everyone updated. Victor Williams, Local 4.
Yeah, police are hoping to find the mother soon. Their concern is her safety and well-being as they look into the circumstances surrounding the death of her child. Much more ahead here at 5. Let's check in with Hank. An almost $2 trillion stimulus deal moving forward, but when could the money actually get into your pocket? New tonight, I'm talking with Senator Debbie Stabenow. Hank Winchester, help me Hank. All right, Hank, also what Chief Craig says he thinks is behind a spike in people shooting at Detroit police officers. Sean. Up next, live at 5 o'clock, the state now open for COVID-19 shots for anyone 50 plus. But are shots available? And for us 50-year-olds, do we have to prove that we have a pre-existing condition? The surprising answers are next.